Hi everyone, my name is Leah Kaki, and today I'm going to show you how to make stained glass windows using Cinema 4D and Redshift. I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this. The first way will use Illustrator and it will give you the most control over how your stained glass windows will look. It will take a little bit longer though. And the second way I'm going to show you is really fast, really easy. You don't need Illustrator for it. And it's for if you're in a rush and you need to get a project done quickly. It's an easy, fast way to make some stained glass windows. So let me get into it and show you how to do it. So what I'd like to start off with mentioning is that you can look up standard sizes of windows online. I found this chart really easily on Google Images and I'm deciding to do this window frame here, which it also mentions the dimensions of the glass of the frame, if you want to see the dimensions of that part of the window. And it also gives you the opening of if you were going to install this in a wall, how large the opening needs to be. For this situation, we are just 3D modeling glass. So we'll look at the glass dimensions and I'm going to make this one down here, which is 31 and a half inches by 41 and a fourth inches. So I can use that as a reference. Okay, so in here you can see that I put 31 and a half inches by 41 and a quarter inches. You can also do this in centimeters too. It doesn't really matter. We just want the scale to be right so that it looks realistic when we render it. Little details like that do help. So this is the correct size and now we can start drawing our stained glass window. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool and I'm going to start drawing. So I also want to mention here that the Pathfinder is really handy for making these stained glass windows. If you just want to make everything one shape, you can hit this right here and then it's all one shape. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I set up this file. Um, when you set up your file for importing vector art into Cinema 4D to create your stained glass, one very important thing to keep in mind is to make sure that all of your splines are joined and there's no wacky points or handles going all over the place. And a good way to check that is pressing control Y. So you, you can zoom in and really see your points and make sure that they're looking the way you'd like them to. Control Y again will take you out of there. And another thing to keep in mind is to have everything so that it is separate from one another, so that there's no overlapping happening like that right there. We don't want that to happen. So I set up all the layers so that each color is a different layer. And when you're putting your artwork on layers, one way to make it easier if you want to select everything that is that color, first you select the object that's that color. You go up to select, same, fill and stroke, and you'll see we just selected all of the ones that are red like this with the same fill and stroke. I'm going to put those back. So that will help us take this into Cinema 4D and have it easy to import. And now you can import files that aren't just AI18, AI8, excuse me. You can import Creative Cloud files out of Illustrator now that are up to date because of the new upgrade for R25. So that's very exciting. They have a vector import and it's wonderful. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to bring Cinema 4D over here. We can drag our file, make sure that create vector object is checkmarked, make sure it's in the units you'd like. 
and hit OK to open. And you'll see it it's there. And you can see all the different colors. And it's very exciting. And it even imported the stroke of our splines. We can see that once we drag that in there, we got a vector import object. And if we click on it and click under object, you can see that if you update the file, all you need to do is hit save and refresh it and your file's color will change if you change the color or whatever update you did will show once you hit the refresh button, which is very handy. Layer offset will take your layers and offset them. And since I did layers by color, you can see that each layer is its own lovely color. I'm going to put this back to zero. You can also mess around with the path spread. So this spreads apart each individual path, which is really quite something. Um, maybe you'll find a use for that. I'm going to put that back to zero because this is going to be a flat window. You can choose your extrude depth. You can choose however many inches you want this to be or centimeters, whatever units you're using. And if you look up here, you'll see, well, I can tell that when I press these buttons, there's individual paths, but where are they? So if you check this hierarchy button here, you'll see now we have a plus button here. You press the plus button, you get all of your beautiful layers, all named, and you can use them as needed. And the really nice thing about having all of your colors and in individual layers is that you'll notice that the colors that we imported here, although they are showing up in our viewport, there are actually no materials on here. So where all these colors are coming from actually is if you go into here and you go into your spline object, um, you'll see that there is this icon here. We click on that tag and you can see your fill color. So what is nice about this is it makes it very easy to grab the color that you need when you're building materials. So I'm going to make a redshift material. So I'll go to redshift, materials, material, material, three materials in that. And I will open up the material manager. I'm going to delete that. So if we click on this and we want to change the transmission color, uh -oh, you'll see that this just disappeared, which is kind of annoying. So we actually need to lock this. Hit the lock button up here lock element, and then you can grab the color picker, grab your color, I'm going to change the weight so that this is much more see-through, I don't want there to be very much diffuse in this because it's clear, so I took the weight of the diffuse down, and then the transmission we raised up, so that's what the weight affects. When you drag a color over here, it will override the color in here. So that is how you change that. And I will go into each one of these layers individually and update that. And I will see you in a little bit once I'm done. I did a few things in here besides adding the materials to all of these different objects here. And just so that you know, these sweeps are your paths and the extrudes are the glass themselves. So your paths from Illustrator in this case would be lead. And another thing that I did is what really helps add more depth to your 
stained glass is if you have some kind of texture behind it. So I used an HDR inside of a Redshift dome light, and you can find your Redshift dome light up here under lights, dome light. And once you have your dome light, you can pick an HDR from here, or you can even go into window asset browser. If you don't have your own HDRs, you can find them online, or you can find them in the asset browser by searching HDRI. And you'll see all of these options here that you can use as well to create some kind of textured background. It's easier than 3D modeling a background outside the window. That is also an option though if you have the time for that and it makes sense for the project. In this case it's easier for me to just have an HDR. And there is one more thing that I'd like to point out to you after I close this is that you can add some more texture to the glass if you'd like. This is optional. But if I look at stained glass online, you'll see that there's individual textures on each section of glass, and it's not just a solid color usually. So we can replicate this in 3D. And I'll show you how to do that. And it's a lot of personal preference how you'd like to do this. And I'm going to show you one way. So for right now, I'm going to just edit this greenish blue color here. I'm going to find a Maxon Noise node, drag it out here. I'm going to drag this so that I can change the refraction and transmission. And what I'd like to do is affect the weight. So this affects how see-through it is. And you'll see that it changed a little bit in the viewport. And what's affecting the transparency is the noise. So you can experiment with different types of noise to create different textures in the glass. So what I'm going to try to do with this one. You can choose whatever type of noise you'd like. I'm going to change this black color in the texture to a lighter color and what that'll do is add some more transparency so that you can see through it and that's a really interesting texture. And you can do this for any of them. So I'm liking how this looks. And you can add that to the rest of your materials if you'd like, so that they each have their own unique texture. I'm going to change the seed in each one of the noises to something random so that they look like individual pieces of glass instead of something we did in 3D that's just one noise type. Changing the seed just randomizes the, the noise from what it was before. So if each one has a different seed, each one will be a little bit different. And now I'm going to go into the camera. And 
You can add your own room if you'd like around the stained glass. What I might end up doing is making this a little bit lighter in some areas because in some places it seems a little bit too intense to me. So this just about wraps up this first version of stained glass. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I'm going to show you the easy, fast way to make geometric stained glass. So the first thing you'll need is to grab a plane. I'm going to take down its segments quite a bit. For now, we can adjust these later. Change the width. To being about the window's width. Change the height. To be the height of the window. Then we'll need a subdivision surface. Place your plane in the subdivision surface. I'm going to take down the subdivisions to one. The subdivision surface takes the, the polygons of the plane and subdivides them. So it's a lot like what it sounds like it does. So that's before and that's after the subdivision surface is added. Next, what we'll like to do is grab a bevel. I held down control so that the bevel fell at the bottom of that hierarchy that I had that I had clicked on. Next, I'll take the bevel, put it under the plane. And we want the bevel to affect points. And this is where it starts to get interesting because what we can do is we can adjust the bevel and you can adjust how many width segments there are and it will totally change how your stained glass looks and this is how you get a geometric pattern for your stained glass.
Now what I'm going to do is grab the subdivision surface and hit current state to object. I'm going to hide this here. This is our subdivision surface. This is our plane. And now all the points are editable. So you want to make sure this is clicked, points. And then you can move them around and adjust this as needed. And this is also our opportunity to fix these corners over here. Each one of these polygons that we've created using this method will become a panel of stained glass. So you want to make sure you like how it looks. I'm going to call this one stained glass panels. And then I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to rename this Stained Glass Lead. Now how we're going to turn this one into lead is we're going to go ahead and grab, whoops, we're going to grab a atom array. And what the atom array is, it takes all of the points on that mesh and it turns it into a sphere. And it takes all of the, all of the edges and it turns those into cylinders. And we're going to use this tool to do something really cool and make some lead for our stained glass. I'm going to change this to 0 0.125, 0 0.125. And now you'll see we have lead. I'm going to make a new material. So I'm actually going to go to Redshift, Materials, Material, Material. Which sounds very repetitious, but that's where it is. I'm going to change this actually to be named. lead. Oh, I already made a lead down there. It's okay. We'll make a new lead. We're going to pick lead from the list to get it close. I'd like to add some extra roughness. And I want it to be a little bit darker because I like that aesthetic. It's all personal. I'm going to add the lead to the atom array. And now this is the fun part. You have your geometric design. You're going to click your polygons. I'm going to actually hide the atom array for right now so that we can just focus on the panels. And now you can make these whatever color you want. So I'm going to use these stained glass materials that I've used before. These kind of remind me of flowers. So I am going to change the colors accordingly. We're going to make group selections. 
of polygons so that it makes it easier to add materials to them. One way to do that is to drag the material over and then you'll see that you have a selection tag, a polygon selection tag, and it has the material before it, which means your material is being added to that selection. You can also add selection tags up here under select, store selection. That's another way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and add colors to all of these polygons and I'll meet back with you once I'm done. There you have it. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and it helped you out, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them for me down below. You can use this technique for stained glass on all different kinds of things, like this rug here that was made using the same technique as for the stained glass. Feel welcome to use it wherever you'd like there to be a geometric pattern. It doesn't have to be just for windows. And I hope you enjoy.